Last episode, we did the first seven stages of the Giro. We did secure three stage wins, but Johansson is the only rider in top 10 of GC right now on 148. And if we go down, we see that Fortunato is on 634 after his two crashes last time. Today we're going to be doing stage 9 to 14, so six stages in today's episode, starting off with a flat one right here. After that, the highly anticipated Montalcino stage, finishing on the Monte Santi Marie Strade Bianche section. Then we're going to venture into 32 kilometers of torturing Fortunato in a 32 kilometer time trial. Then another flat stage, a hill stage with two peaks in the last 30 kilometers with a small hill in the last five. And we'll finish off with a mountain stage to Servinia. This is a pretty steady climb from what it looks like, but it really isn't if you look at the profile. A fake news climb indeed. The one good thing about Fortunato is that he just entered his fitness peak, so who knows what can still happen in the next 13 stages. Nonetheless, on this one, we'll be sprinting with Stefan Oldani, hoping for his second stage win. Oliveira right now on 95. Aro get out of the way and drop through. There we go. Let's start sprinting with Oliveira way too early probably, but I'll do it anyway. Oldani in the wheel. Last kilometer incoming. I'll launch right now because there's a bit of a corner there. Kovi in the wheel to gain some points. Kovi in the wheel to gain some points. Kovi will sprint as well. We've got Metalier taking it. Ah, he beats Oldani on the line. We tried, but got second on this one. What the podium does do is bring us in the lead of the Chiclamino jersey again with Oldani this time around. Three points out of Kovi. Medellir now in third on only nine points of the lead. And then it arrives, the stage I have been waiting for for quite a while, the Montalcino stage. We've got five Strade Bianche sections. We're going to do our best to keep ourselves well positioned with both Johannesson and with Fortunato. In this stage, we're going to try and do something. I just don't know when and how. Ooh, Oldani's at the front. I'm going to go into the attack with Oldani. Why not? Just at the start. There we go. We're off. We've got a companion already. To say Neuenhuis Edmondson. Let's go with Fortunato as well. Why not? There we go. Into the attack at the start. Quintana, Evenepoel, Zana, Akalmajan. Oh, snap. Nope. Fortunato tries again. There we go. I don't see any riders from Lotus Adal with energy. We've got other people now attacking as well. Let's try and get Otto in the break as well to get it with Tom's right here. There we go. Two riders in the break. And can I get Fancello in there as well? That would be awesome. There we go. Three riders in the break. Can I get someone else in there? Kovi. Kovi. Imagine if Kovi can get in the break. There we go. Kovi goes. Oh my god. In two kilometers, we start the first sandy section with the break of Battistella, Tom Skuyens, Mosca, Campanades, The Wolf, Fancelu, Fortunato, Aru, and Kovi. That is four minutes 25 ahead of the peloton right now. So it's not one yet. Not at all. Here we go. Passo del Lume Spento. 6.1 kilometers in length, 5.3 average. I can't go too fast at all because. Well, my energy on Kovi and Fancelu isn't exactly glorious right now. I don't want to shout too early, but Mr. Fortunato has the virtual Malia Rosa at the moment with a lead of 8 minutes 30 on a peloton. That is really not pacing. Actually, I'm wrong. Fortunato is not virtual leader. Kovi is. I forgot he was so close in GC. The last of these three sections is starting. Still a solid lead on the peloton. 10 minutes and so forth. We now have a virtual lead of 7 minutes in the GC with Kovi. That is insane. And we've got 30 kilometers left to ride, and I think the energy to do it. Last four kilometers, I'm giving it everything with Kovi to make sure Fortunato gets to the line and has an advantage on the peloton. Last uphill section coming up. Oh, Fortunato spending a lot of energy. I think Kovi will win the stage relatively easily, but the wolf is still here, so we gotta watch out a bit. Fortunato will drop. Do the best you can, Fortunato. Do the best you can. I'm gonna try and go with Kovi right now. There we go. Let's see if we can beat the Wolf. It looks like the Wolf has a lead, but we fly past with Kovi. Kovi takes the stage right here. Yes, in... No, 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 no! I was celebrating too early! No! <laughs> the Wolf! <laughs> Damn it! Oh, come on! Fortunato, 120. We're now 9 minutes ahead of the peloton. 8 minutes. We're losing time very quickly. I should have spent less energy in the last 5 kilometers, but we have a solid lead in GC after this one. 2 minutes with Fortunato, I think. And I think 7 minutes or so with Kovi. Jesus Christ, let's see what we can do in this group as well. Where is Johannesson? Oh my god, that's horrible. Ooh, we might have fucked Johannesson right here by not watching too much. I hope all these gaps count as no gaps, because that would be ideal, but otherwise we are losing one minute and a half or so with this man. The new Malia Rosa is Kovi with 5 minutes 27 on Fortunato, 7 minutes 59 on Carapaz. <laughs> Kovi, man. As a consequence of this stage, Viviani is even further. Merlier as well in the Chiclamino jersey. Kovi also in Chiclamino. 
if Rodriguez is two minutes ahead of Johansson in white, that means that we lost like three minutes with Johansson. That's horrible. So Carapaz finished on 10.59 and... Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh ho 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 ho. Two minutes and a half. Johansson is now on 12.20 in GC, which is basically four minutes behind Carapaz instead of two, I guess. Gotta be honest, I don't know what to do now. Kovi could actually win this Giro if I play it right. But Fortunato is up there now as well, so we've got two cards to play. Let's hope the time trial is pretty decent for Fortunato. Kovi should be able to stay relatively near that spot with his time trial stat. Time trial time. Porto Azzurro, 32 kilometers, hilly parkour. On paper, Kovi has a decent time trial and a decent hill stat to do this. 79 and 73 in that. And then we look at Johansson with 73 hill and 68 time trial. Not that great, but Fortunato arrives with 62 time trial here and 75 hill. So I guess we're going to figure it out along the way. Johansson is on the road. My strategy is the following. 73 at the start until his first hill. Just popped it up to 80 with Johansson. At the top, I will drop it down to 73. Then when we get to the next climb, 85 till the top, because that's the steepest one. We can benefit a lot there as climbers. Then drop it down to 75 in the final, or 76, something like that. Looking at Aru, 76 is going to be the one that's necessary. There we go, drop it down towards 73 in the descent, let's keep that up, up to 80 again for this tiny hill towards the uh, intermediate point, then drop it down to 73 once again, climb starting for Tobias, let's put him on 85 right now, in the meanwhile Fortunato and Kovi will be starting. A nice feature for PCM would be if you could see all your riders on the map at the same time, because now I don't know where Johansson is at, at this very moment. There we go, we've got Fortunato on 73 off. Same story for Kovi in the Malia Rosa. Let's drop Johansson towards 76 right now until the line. There we go. Fortunato about to start the first climbing section. Let's put him up towards 80 at this very moment. By the way, the daily form on Fortunato is not that extravagant. When it comes to Johansson, kind of the same. Kovi, same story. We don't have very glorious days on these riders right now. Let's move it up to 80 already on Kovi. There we go. Fortunato not at the top yet. There he is, 73 again. Kovi about to be on top as well. We'll drop him towards 73 as well. On top in the same kind of way. Fortunato up to 80 on this hill. There we go. Let's drop him down towards 73 once again afterwards. Kovi, same story, up to 80 when this hill starts. There we go. This is so micromanagement y, but we need to at this point. There we go. Let's take a look at the time checks. 52 seconds for Kovi, 1 minute 17 for Fortunato. That's actually pretty damn good. Last kilometer incoming for Johansson right now. 140 behind at the second time check. I'm guessing 2 minutes 30 or something will be the finish. 3 minutes. Ooh, that's a bit much to my liking. But let's do better with Fortunato and Kovi here. We are on the climb, so up to 85. There we go. And Kovi's about to do the same thing. There we go. At the top, let's drop it towards 76 right now. There we go. Into the descent with Fortunato. Kovi not that far behind. Let's drop him down to 76 as well. Their times are 120 for Kovi, 2 minutes for Fortunato. Last kilometer for Fortunato, 3 minutes 30. Ooh, that's not great, is it? Kovi had some energy left. 159. Obviously, Kovi's still in the lead. 650 on Sivakov right now. 6.59 on Fortunato, so Fortunato still has a minute on Carapaz, which is great. Honestly, we defended that pretty well with Fortunato, I'd say. Kind of surprised by the strength of Sivakov in this time trial. After those two pretty stressful stages, back to a sprint stage, back to an opportunity for Oldani. Last three kilometers, Fancello leading out Oliveira ahead of Oldani. There we go, Oliveira can go with 2.5. That's way too early. <laughs> that is way too early, Benji. But it looks like we're actually doing relatively well. Kovi in third wheel right now. Kovi in third wheel. Let's launch with Kovi as well. There we go. Oldani versus Merlier once again. Merlier is the man when it comes to these sprints. He's by far a better sprinter and he is showing it. I made a small mistake in this stage. I should have stopped Oldani from sprinting during the sprint because now Kovi only gained four seconds of bonus while we could have gained six if I was second. When it comes to GC, that leads us to 654 head of Sivakov. So pretty happy about that. At this point, I believe Kovi could win this Giro if we play it nicely. The next stage is also a Kovi stage as well, to be honest. It's a hill stage, and we've got two of these climbs in the last 30 kilometers, the Diano d'Alba, and after that, La Mora. Not the major ones, but there's a tiny uphill in the last five kilometers, which could make it a reduced sprint, which Kovi's pretty good at. Climb's about to start. I'm ready. 
I've got myself with Fortunato and Kovi well protected near the front. I just need to get over this climb with the best. There we go. Nicely over the top with both Kovi and Fortunato and quite a few companions. So we still have riders to protect us on the next climb. Here we go. A bit of pressure with Fortunato. Actually, I'm going to stop doing that. And I'm going to put some pressure with Kovi. He's got way more energy. I might even consider attacking. Oh, 15k is a long way though. There we go. I'm going for the attack with Kovi. Looks like we have no attackers. Fortunato can just sit up. Shockman and so full following. We don't have Karapaz responding though, so that's pretty cool. Let's work together with these riders and see if we can get away with Shockman up there. Chikone trying to attack away as well. Ullman now trying to chase that down. But we are in the attack with Alessandro Kovi and Max Shockman. Three and a half kilometers to go. I'm basically pacing Shockman through the line right now. That's what I'm doing. We've got a gap of one minute on the peloton let's drop it towards 85 come on Kovi, you can do it man you can do it fortunato sit up you look great fortunato i could attack with fortunato as well you know i'm gonna try and do it let's try and follow the move of adria with fortunato fancello you are done for johannes and you as well fortunato goes there we go formula with us i'm going to just attack myself am i bringing people with me probably but not cut up so i won't be complaining right now oh my god I forgot to sprint with Kovi. I forgot to go for the stage. Shockman just got a free stage because of me. Damn it! <laughs> Kovi gets second. Fortunato's gonna be uh, trying to finish in this group together with Ciccone, Ballerini, and so forth. Where's Carapaz? I don't know where Carapaz is. Let's take a look in the uh, ranking here and see what's happened to him. Where is he in GC? Oh no. Has he abandoned? Oh my god. Carapaz has abandoned. So yeah, I gave Sharkman a free stage and we got extra seconds with Kovi. So our goal right now is winning the Giro with Alessandro Kovi. GC-wise, we now have 8 minutes 18 on Sivakov and Fortunato in the same time. Carapaz gone because of the withdrawal. That is insane. We went from having the worst luck possible, crashing twice with Fortunato and so forth, to week 2 where we have all the luck in the world. As in Carapaz crashing and completely being out of the race. Kovi getting 10 minutes on everybody on the Montalcino stage. Fortunato getting 7 minutes in that same bloody stage. Despite having no mountain stages so far in the episode, so much has happened. And now we've got the final stage. Servinia, 14th stage. Fortunato, 4th favorite. Lopez being the favorite. Sivakov in 2nd, Lana in 3rd. Of all these three, I'm mostly scared about Sivakov right now because he's the only one close to us in GC. With 22 kilometers left, I'm not happy at all with Kovi's positioning. I'm trying to get him to the front desperately, but I also don't want to use all my energy in the first 10 kilometers of this climb, you know? Okay, we are closing in towards the front with Kovi. Let's drop his spendage towards like 69, something like that, because we are only half yellow right now, and that is not enough in my eyes. Kind of annoying, because I think I can actually take a lot of time with Fortunato on the stage, but if I do so, then Kovi's gonna get in trouble, so... I'm kind of trying to play with two horses and it's not compatible right now. And we've got the move that DSM has been pacing for. Hindley is going. Jai's on like 1350, so I don't care about him. Kovi's energy is not where I want it to be. Sivakov now starting to pace. That is our competitor. He is seeing that Kovi's in trouble and he's going to try and use it right now. So I think I'm going to start betting on Fortunato as well because I don't trust Kovi at all. Two kilometers to go. It's going to flatten out a tiny bit pretty soon, so... Gotta make sure I can follow what's happening here. In the wheel of Sivakov. There we go. Start sprinting, man. Start sprinting. Get out of the wheel. We're gonna finish, I think, third on the stage. Ah, Kovi, where are you, man? Where are you? Come on, Kovi. Don't lose too much time. I hope max a minute. It's gonna be more, I think. Come on, Kovi. Sprint for it. Sprint for it. Let's try and get to that group. It's not gonna be the case. But we are on, I think, 1 minute 30 of the Lorenzo Fortunato group with Kovi. GC-wise, Sivakov gets closer on 6.37 now of Kovi. Fortunato, same time as Sivakov. That's it for the races of today. Six stages and were some crazy ones in there. We are now in the Malia Rosa finishing off the episode. So didn't see that coming at the start of it. I can tell you that 6.37 is the lead, but it's with a non-climber or at least not a glorious climber. Fortunato sitting relatively well in third though so what's your take on our current position do you think we've got the grasp on winning it with Kovi or with Fortunato or do you think that Sivakov is going to beat our ass in week three not a single stage win in this episode but I think we bottled at least two of them because we were looking at other things and that's because we focused on GC this episode and 
I'm guessing it paid off from what I can see at the uh, GC standings currently. Anyway, let's hope we can get both in week 3 stage wins and a Maliadosa at the end. That's gonna be for next time. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.